today's Mercedes-Benz interview of the day brought to you by Mercedes-Benz EV, the fully electric EQS sedan from Mercedes-Benz, and its innovation on a magnificent scale. The vehicle all electric. The feeling all Mercedes. Learn more at MBUSA.com slash EQS. We've got Randy Johnson, Hall of Famer, set to join us. No stolen bases. Who'd you hit the home run off of? Off of Doug Davis in Milwaukee. And then later... I think the following year we became teammates, so uh, <laughs> we had we had a lot of a lot a lot to talk about on the golf course. Do you remember though what pitch? I mean, you guys always remember what the count was and what the pitch uh, was. You know, the game. I, I think the game was tied then. You know, I think it was one to one. So with with my game face on, I took it very <laughs> serious. You know, I didn't milk it like the players now. I ran around the faces, but they showed the dugout. And the dugout, all my teammates were more happy than I was. <laughs> Would you throw at somebody if they tried to bunt on you? Nolan Ryan used to do that, but did you take offense? I heard, if I, 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 heard, I got a lot of stories from him. Uh, you know, we worked uh, worked together on my mechanics with Tom House, and then we did some videos together, and... And now being in the Hall of Fame with him, uh, you know, I, uh, we have a lot of time to talk. And uh, and um, and actually, I have a lot of time to talk with a lot of the great uh, pitchers, uh, some that are no longer with us. But I've had the opportunity to pick their brain and, and get to meet them and and ask them what it was like to play back in the day. Um, I think there was a little bit of... Uh, you know, I guess everybody said I was kind of surly on the day that I pitched. I, I don't know why, but uh, I guess that would be a definition. Um, and I guess I, I think the one encounter I had that really tells you about I am a nice guy <laughs> uh, was a confrontation that I had with, a, you know, a, a friend, uh, Kenny Lofton, yeah. a, left a left handed hitter. And it's on YouTube, and I saw it recently. Someone showed it, and I threw a fastball, and you know I didn't finish the pitch up, so it kind of sailed up and into him. Uh, it was a, actually it was a slider that kind of backed up. It didn't, it didn't, you know, it didn't break it that well, and so it it kind of you know came up and into him on a slider, and he kind of like you know was you know uh, you know flopping around the home plate there like it almost hit him or something and uh, I'm yelling on them at the mound you can read my lips that was a slider that was a slider <laughs> and so so the benches you know go back into the dugout and everything is restored and then I throw him a fastball up and in <laughs> and I go that was a fastball <laughs> We're talking to Randy Johnson, uh, Hall of Famer, joining us on behalf of DirecTV. The, uh, the bird encounter 23 years ago, and Randy wants to make things right together with DirecTV. Randy, they uh, created a series of bird sanctuaries mimicking a baseball stadium built atop DirecTV satellite dishes. And you have an opportunity. Baseball fans can go to directtv.com backslash bird ballparks and enter for a chance to win your own stadium sanctuary. Uh, you could have a chance to win the millet mullet, a rendition <laughs> of what I was wearing in the commercial or your own bird ballpark because direct TV now is satellite free. So uh, it was a great partnership uh, that came up a couple of months ago. They asked if I would like to write the ship with the dead bird <laughs> And uh, be able to move forward in life and uh, and feel good about myself and and get PETA off my back and <laughs> and uh, I said sure and so I just thought uh, what took so long to uh, to do something like this okay but does the bird's estate get anything from this Randy well uh, they get the, they get lifetime season tickets oh they do. To, to, yeah, yeah. So the so the so the birds can come and watch. Uh, <laughs> you know, they they get their own uh, MLB package. I guess. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay, how often are you asked about that? Uh, I played 22 years in the major leagues, and it's the one thing that I'm remembered for. Uh, and I don't mind. Uh, but. Uh, a lot of times when I'm walking somewhere, 
and uh, and someone recognizes me, it 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 won't be uh, one of the accomplishments that maybe I had, but it will be. Oh, you're the guy that killed the bird. Yeah. So uh, it comes up. It, it still comes up a lot after 23 years. But I think you're underrated because of this. I think because of your your height, uh, John Cruck in the All Star Game, the bird that. People, like I even went back looking at the stat. You have five Cy Youngs. I think four in a row. I mean. I won, I won 300 games. I, yes. I've got almost 5,000 strikeouts. But it, it feels. <laughs> I got a home run. <laughs> you did. You hit a, a, a bomb is what you hit. But it, yeah. it feels like because of all these things that we don't focus in on your career as much as. I mean, your World Series MVP, but it's, hey, oh, that's the tall pitcher. Oh, that's the guy who threw really hard and, you know, John Cruck turned his batting helmet around. Or it's like Shaq. You know, well, you know what, Dan? Maybe maybe one day you should have a Randy Johnson day and, and uh, <laughs> just go through all my accomplishments and, and uh, write the shit. This is it, Randy. This is the Randy Johnson day. Uh, okay, here yeah, we are. Yes, uh, absolutely. But yeah, when you went, but when you hit that bird and it went like poof, did you even know what you did? No, it was in spring training down in Tucson. The Diamondbacks are now up in uh, Scottsdale, like all the other teams are. There is no more spring train down in Tucson, Arizona. So we were down at Tucson Electric Park. I was pitching in a day game there. The only reason it was even caught on camera is because our uh, videographer had a little camcorder out in center field for the hitters and for me so I could watch my mechanics and the hitters could do the same. That's the only reason that was even captured on TV, on video. And uh, when I initially threw the pitch, I throw the pitch, I hit the bird, and then I'm just kind of like, I'm kind of stunned, you know, like what, what happened? I thought initially someone had thrown something maybe from a dugout or the stands. And, you know, I don't, I didn't know really what it was uh, initially until Jeff Kent, who was on, on the on deck circle with the San Francisco giants, the bird, the the impact of the bird actually knocked him over by uh, the bird over by the on deck circle. And he kind of picked it up. And then I think everybody kind of knew what was going on then. So, but yeah, just, it all happened so fast. I can't imagine if you're coming up now that somebody's going to say to you, hey, we need you to go five innings, maybe six innings, but pitchers nowadays, you got you guys don't go eight or nine. I, uh, I've i talked about it a little bit, and, and, uh, and I tried to be as positive as I could about it, and, and I mean it in a positive way that I think – that today's pitcher, and I'm not talking about the pitchers that have been, you know, 10 plus years because, because they, they weren't a part of that. I think those guys, when they were young pitchers, they were, had the ability to go deeper into the games. This whole regimen about um, analytics and all that is really kind of picked up in the, you know, uh, and it's steamrolling now. And, I think that uh, the the pitchers of today, you know, the last five years that are trying to make their mark in the game, I don't think that they're going to be as good as they can possibly be. And, And I mean that in a positive way, that because there's pitch counts and, and, uh, turning the lineup over comes into play, I think, and bullpens are, you know, uh, a, a big deal now by the way they use bullpens, you're not going to be able to pitch your way out of a problem. You're not going to be able to f- see the mentality, the mental, the mental mentality and the physical um, uh, attributes you have to have to get through um, an inning like that. You're going to come out, they're going to go to the bullpen and you're never going to develop the demeanor of what it takes to get through an inning like that. And maybe throw those 10 more extra stressful pitches opposed to non-stress pitches. Yeah. And uh, and I think you're not going to go deep. The pitchers aren't going to go deeper in the game, which means, Dan, that there's not going to be a lot of 20-game winners like there was uh, in the past. Because when you go seven to eight, maybe even a complete game every once in a while, 
You know, you got to, sometimes you got to get the opposing starting pitcher out of the game because he's pitching so well. And then when you get to their bullpen, that's when you're able to maybe scratch a run across and maybe you win two to one or one, one, nothing. Uh, and, and you do that late in the game. And so now you've picked up a win and that one or two wins like that at the end of the year, now you've gone from 18 to maybe 20 wins or from, you know, you know, uh, 200 and something wins to 300 over your, over your career. And so I, I just feel like starting pitchers, you know, because the lease is a little bit shorter because you're not seeing pitchers throw 125, 135 pitches. It's usually about a 95 to 110. And that usually takes you to about five or six innings. You're not going to get the opportunity. There's too much game left. Unless it's a blowout, you're not going to get a lot of opportunities to win ball games. Uh, we're talking to Randy Johnson, the Hall of Famer, joining us on behalf of uh, Direct TV. Do you have albums back there behind you? Lots of albums, lots of LPs. Okay, if you had to grab one album when you get out of the house, what would you grab? Oh, man, there's so many, but if I just grab. How about if I just grab like a, a whole stack and, and I have them like in punk rock, in mobile fidelity, in like prog rock. <laughs> so here we go. We got, uh, you know. Yes. Is that, is that is yeah. that fragile? We just bought, yes, we just bought Van Halen one step. So it's supposed <laughs> to be, it's from the master recording redone. And then we got Steely Dan. Ooh. And then we got, you know, what else we got over here? We got, uh, we got, then we got some punk rock stuff. And then we got, you know, then we got Jeff Rotol. Uh, what is this? Oh, we got Tom Petty. And then we got, you know, stuff from the 60s and 70s, you know? And then we, yeah, we got it all. We got it all. If I said that you could have had a career for 20, years or more being a drummer let's say you could have been the drummer for rush or you you just are a fan of rush and you still have your baseball career if i said you I, i'll take away your baseball career but you've been the drummer for rush for 30 years uh huh yeah that's a that's a well, if I if I don't have a baseball career, I want to be able to do something in life. I mean, but you have to uh, give it up. You have to give that up. It, it doesn't exist. I'm talking to Randy Johnson, the drummer for for Rush right now. Well, I, 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 would I would I do that? Uh, no, I just uh, I just I didn't really know about drumming when I was seven or eight years old, but I already knew about pitching. Mm -hmm. I already knew about Vita Blue. You know, the person that I looked up to because I grew up outside of the Bay Area and he was, you know, playing for the Oakland A's. Uh, I I love all that music. I love drumming. I uh, I love the band Rush. I love lots of rock and roll okay, bands. Okay, give me your top five drummers. Aside from from Neil with with Rush, who, give me give me five of your favorite drummers. Uh, John Bonham, Ginger Baker, Buddy Rich. Keith Moon, I think that's five right there. John, and we're going in all different kinds of genre. Buddy Buddy Rich is, I think, a lot of people uh, look to him uh, as probably, you know, one of the finest drummers and best drummers of all time. And then you get them into the rock and roll and everybody kind of, it's either, you know, I mean, really, what really, what really defines the best drummer? It's kind of like you saying, you know, who is the best pitcher? Well, what era are we talking about? You can't you can't compare Cy Young back in the <laughs> early 1900s to Greg Maddox. That's not just not fair, you know? Yeah. So I guess you could do it a little bit easier with drumming. But, uh, you know, there's a lots of different genres. And I think, you know, you'd be surprised those jazz drummers like uh, Buddy Rich could probably do a lot of the stuff that rock and roll drummers could do. But rock and roll drummers can't do what Buddy Rich was doing. It's great to talk to you, and it uh, seems like you're doing well. 
So uh, I, I'm doing okay. I'm uh, five five months removed from full knee replacement, so I'm on the disabled list now. But look for me, look for me coming out of a bullpen somewhere <laughs> after the All Star break. Oh, uh, great to talk to you again, Randy. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Dan. I appreciate it. That's Randy Johnson, Hall of Famer and uh, Direct TV has launched for the birds. It's a national advertising campaign. <laughs> 